Hello. Hello. So your election, this particular one, is with controversy. You were running, and it, you know, it was you and what Jeff Sweat. Yes. Okay. Yep. And now you are standing unopposed. That's correct. Due to an error. Yes. A filing error. Yes. So let's start with that. That is hot news. When you got the call that Mary, you are running unopposed, what did you think? I didn't believe it. I, I said that that couldn't be true. That's impossible. Jeff had ac accidentally uh, filled out the paperwork for the two year seat and it had already gotten certified by the town clerk. So it, after uh, investigation, they found that it was too late to reverse the, the mistake. So is it an early Christmas gift? Um, I'm, go I'm going to be honest, yes, for me, for me, but for the public, no. I, it, I don't think it is fair for the public because I think that um, they should always have a choice. So tell us how you ended up in Wareham School Committee. Give us a little bit about your background. Sure. I've been a part of Wareham my whole life. Um, my grandfather had a house in Onset, which I still live in. And then I um, ended up becoming a teacher in Wareham, a special ed teacher, grade six. And I actually started with Tracy Cote, who's an amazing person and has doing an amazing job as a middle school principal. Uh, and I worked in Wareham for 17 years in various positions. I, like I said, I started special ed teacher, grade six. Fantastic. Yeah. And then I decided that <clears throat> um, I might actually have more impact on um, helping students uh, and also um, having better programs in Wareham by being on the school committee. So I took a risk and I found a job in Rockland as an early childhood coordinator and ran for school committee and, and won and another won. Christmas day. <laughs> <laughs> right. So tell me about what was your goal going in and what led you to go in? Why did you run the first time? Uh, the, I, when I left Wareham at that time, they were really cutting special ed to the bone. So I felt that re I really needed to focus on building special ed up again. And that was my focus and, and remains my focus. I think there's still more to do with special education, whereas especially with bringing back the special ed public day school that we used to have. Um, I now work in Fall River as a special ed supervisor and we have a very successful public day school that not only does it allow students to remain in their community, but it also is um, financially cost effective for the district. Uh, right now, uh, it's, we have a huge cost with out of district students, uh, not only because of tuition, but also because of transportation. Mm -hmm. So on the average, it costs the district about $100,000 to send a student out. Uh, but again, it's, it's also, I mean, I always have finance on my mind, mm -hmm. but I, I also have the student on my mind. To me, it's more beneficial for a student to stay in their own community. In their own community. Yes. And that's what you came in to work for. Yes. And, and tell me ab about the uh, progress you have made in that fight. Not much. Not much. <laughs> I'll okay. be honest. Be completely honest. Um, we have, um, and the other thing we used to have too was a, a, an alternative school for you know, regular ed kids, which we have, but it has uh, significantly declined in, in size. I believe when I, I left, there were probably 30 students in the um, day alternative school, and now we're down to maybe, I wanna say five. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that we still have students that need that alternative education. They just need a smaller setting and a different approach. And that may, and I know one of the concerns in Wareham is behavior, discipline, and all of that. And, and I believe that alternative education in the public day school would be a, a great solution for, for everyone. And also, uh, Mike Flaherty brought up another good point, and that is the child that sort of sits in the middle 
um, who isn't the advanced, mm -hmm. uh, where they have all these programs for the advanced students, and then who's not on the lower end, mm -hmm. where they uh, do have programming, but again, I want to strengthen it for the uh, children on the lower end. Uh, so looking at what can we do for the children in the middle. And one thing that I, I have thought about, even last term I've brought it up, is uh, more vocational programming. Okay. Um, I, and not to say that the IB program is a wonderful program, it certainly is a wonderful program, but in, in my opinion, I think we would have been uh, better off going with more vocational program to meeting the needs of the students who aren't able to get into Upper Cape. So then they're stuck. They're stuck where they really wanted to go and get some vocational training, and, and now they can't because they couldn't get into to Upper Cape. So now at least they can, if we had it, they could come out with a skill. And um, a piggybacking on that is that I think that we need to remember that going to college isn't always the answer or the best thing for a person. There are so many skills out there, um, electricians, plumbers, um, hairdressers, uh, that, that are doing so well and is so successful in life, and we need to remember that. Okay, so you, you talked about the goals, why you ran, mm -hmm. and what you're going to be working on this year. Um, what is your overall evaluation of our school systems? And tell us about the committee itself from the inside out. Okay. Uh, my overall evalu evaluation of the school system mm -hmm. is that we have amazing teachers here. I know because I, I, you know, like I said, I've worked here for 17 years, so I know we have amazing teachers. Uh, we do have good programs that are happening, the dual enrollment, the um, IB, but again, I probably wouldn't have focused on that, uh, AP programming. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're now looking at um, doing more literacy work in their early childhood years, which that is another focus of mine as well. I'd like to see that strengthened up. I think the teachers are doing amazing jobs, but they need, in my opinion, they need more support to do it effectively. Mm -hmm. You know, right now they're they're doing interventions in large groups, and they need to be doing them in smaller groups to be effective. And that too is where I, I'm looking at equity between the schools. So at the high school we have some IB classes where you have only three to four students in them. And then you look down at the elementary level um, and you have large classes where you need to have them smaller to, to have effective interventions. And I also know that it's kind of like the middle child syndrome, but mine it tends to have less supports mm -hmm. than they d do at Deacus or at um, the high school. And I understand some of the reasoning for that, but also I think it makes sense to look at um, what is best for the students. Okay, regardless where right. they are. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I asked my other candidates this, those who are running mm -hmm. opposed, why you? I'm going to ask you the same question. Let's say Jeff was in this election mm -hmm. with you. What are you bringing to the table that Jeff isn't? Um, bringing a uh, thorough knowledge of one, the Wareham community, because I've been a part of Wareham my whole life. Um, the other is an inside and out understanding of the school system because I worked in not just one school, but I worked within all the schools. Um, for 17 years. Uh, I also continue to work in education, like I said, as a special ed supervisor, so I bring, I bring that knowledge, I think, um, extensively, especially in the area of special ed and early childhood. Okay. You know, the community is very critical of the school department. Mm -hmm. Why do you think so? I think um, part of it, and I was thinking about this on my way over because I knew that'd probably be a question. <laughs> I think that part of it is because we go from one extreme to another, meaning that we are so, we want to put the positive out there so badly that we 
forget about the bad, you know, the negative. We just brush that. No, no, no. Don't talk. Don't talk about that. Basically, <laughs> yes. don't talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I think if we were more transparent mm -hmm. and say yes. This is a problem. Discipline's a problem. Yes, it, it definitely is a problem, and we're working on that. And I don't know if I've already mentioned it, but I'd like to see the, I think I have, the public day school come back and the alternative education come back so that we can address them in a more appropriate, appropriately way. Mm -hmm. I know that they're trying to, they like with the social workers, they've, they've hired social workers, they've hired behaviorists, um, which I should have, I should, say that they've been put back because mm. that's when I left, they had cut the, those things. So yes, I can see that there is effort out there, but I would like to see, um, like I said, those other programs come back and have more serious, in-depth discussion about it and, and say, yeah, honesty. Yeah, yeah, that's right, honesty. Mm. Yes, we are struggling with this. Let's do something about it. Now, those are negative uh, stereotypes that the department is facing. T to what extent are they related to the budget restrictions? Do you see any correlation there? Yeah, absolutely, because it does cost money. Okay. It, co it costs money to say we decide to bring back the alternative school and the public day. It's going to it's going to cost to start it up. Okay. But in my opinion, it's it's going to be cost effective because no longer are we going to be spending a hundred thousand dollars per student to um, send them out. I, we're, we'll be paying for the cost of the teacher which I don't know average fifty something thousand cost of a para unfortunately they don't get paid very much and then you know some other staffing but when you put it all together you're not going to be paying as much as as sending the students out. The new and budget that has come out, lacking seventy-one thousand mm -hmm. dollars. There's mm -hmm. a gap there. Yeah. What's your I, What's your take on the new budget? Um, it's It's unfortunate. <laughs> you know, it's It's definitely sad to see that um, we're not getting more for the the you know in taking into consideration the the cost of living and the. Um, the increases that happen in, in salary and and with um, insurance and and all of that mm. um, but where could uh, we make the cuts there were well, some cuts were suggested do you do, are you do you agree with that some of the cuts yes and again it, it goes back to looking at programming where are we spending our money wisely um, and in some cases I don't think the money is being spent wisely mm. and we could be more um, cost effective. I keep using that word, okay. cost effective. All right. Yeah. And um, my last question to you is, what is your stance regarding social and merit promotion? Oh, another controversial <laughs> question. Um, don't you just know it? See, and, you know, and it, it sort of goes back to everything I've been already talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with, you know, what Mike was saying that why are we, you know, just socially promoting these kids. But I also agree with um, what the um, school district is saying too, that the research doesn't support it. it doing, just keeping a, a child back isn't going to um, benefit them. Mm -hmm. I've, research I've read about it is, say you keep a child back in uh, second, third grade, uh, then later, they, it seems like they're doing better in the next few years, but then later down the line, say in sixth grade, seventh grade, they start failing again. And I actually have personally experienced that, where I had students who mm -hmm. were retained in, in, say, even first grade, mm -hmm. and then they came to me in the sixth grade, and they, they were struggling again. Mm -hmm. Uh, but so my thought, my answer, or it's not an, an answer, obviously, <laughs> my thought is that we need to look at um, doing interventions better. And that's what I was saying about the high school where they've got classrooms for the IB program. They have classes of three and four that should be happening down at the elementary level, mm. early childhood. It, that, so they have intense intervention going on there. Um, the, and the, the, again, the research will support that. In order for intervention, when you get to the intense level, in order for it to be effective, you, can't ha you shouldn't have a group more than three okay. it, doing it. Yeah. And you, you're running, of course, unopposed. You're going to be in the school committee. 
How influential are you guys in the schools, in the education the yeah, kids are getting? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question. Um, I don't feel like that I at least have a lot of influence. Um, and many times I see that most of the committee members just go with what you know, the superintendent decides, which is fine. And, and we can't change that. That's one thing. We can't change that. The only thing we have power over is uh, the budget and also her evaluation. That's the only thing we really have power over. We don't have any sort of um, decision making on programming, but we can suggest and recommend. Um, however, if you go to the school committee classes, there's a class that you go to, to in order to be on the committee. Uh, they'll tell you that, you know, you, you really should go with what the superintendent wants. Okay. But it, it's hard for me because of my background, mm -hmm. you know, and what I know. So it, it's hard for me to just say, yes, yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't see why there can't be some s a disagreement on a committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, if everyone's saying yes, what's the reason for a committee? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. But, well, thank you so well, much you. for all your dedication. Thank you. And um, congratulations. Oh, you have thank won. You. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so three more uh, years. No, yes, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Right. Thank you.